So our talk today is going to be the robots are taking our jobs, but in a good way. So as you heard in the keynote today, you shouldn't really be afraid of robots. They're going to help us test our products and make sure everything's better. So we're going to start with the introduction. Uh, I'm Riaz. I'm an iOS engineer working on our product. Hi, and I'm Lulua. I work as a test engineer at Shopkeep and uh, mainly testing iOS native apps. So this is Shopkeep. We are a iPad point of sale system. As you can see, that's our app running on the iPad over there. And we also have a card reader, a cash register, and a printer right there. So those are different type of hardware integrations that you might see on our system. Um, so we have our point of sale. We take payments. And we have a business intelligence side of our product. Uh, primarily, we focus on the iPad and integrating new hardware into our system. So this is a picture of our screen that our merchants see. As you can see, they could have different items that they could ring up for a sale. Um, when they bring stuff up, it could be any number of items. There can be any number of names. And then we have to make sure everything works properly. So let's go into the problem. Sure. So as my friend here said, Shopkeep, uh, what we make is an iPad register application. And it is a point of sale application. And the main thing that our customers really look forward to in our app and what our app is really used for is taking payments. That's literally the main heart of a point of sale, sale app. So clearly, we touch the money. And that is how the need uh, arose to test the credit card payments and making sure that we take the payments correctly, we take credit cards correctly the way they we payment is processed the right way, and we're charging customers the way they're supposed to be charged. And as part of this testing effort, we were spending hours just doing laborious effort, which was just doing swipes. And we were like, we're wasting so much time just doing manual swipes. There has to be a better way to test this. Uh, our automated test suite initially, before we added the solution, we're doing test cases with uh, it was simulator based, and we were actually missing the hardware integration part of doing the actual swipe. And this limitation was a big limitation for us because, like I said, being in the point of sales business, we had to make sure the money that we were touching was always taken correctly. And that's why we were like, we need to find a solution to test credit card readers. Um, so the possible solutions we came up with was stubbing or mocking the card readers in code. We were like, OK, this is safe. You just mock the card reader part, and then you go ahead and finish off your transaction. But clearly, that was not the right approach. If you guys heard the keynote uh, speech today, they also said sometimes laws require you to even do a test process the way an actual human would go through the process. And that would stubbing would not be an, the way a normal flow or for, uh, normal credit flow goes through the whole process. So that would not be an end-to-end -end test. The other option was hiring a bunch of worker bees that run a bu bunch of tests which for people like me, we would, we would sit there and just continuously be swiping cards. And that was the make-do solution we were using at that time, but that was not really the solution that we wanted to go ahead with. Uh, so that one was out. The next option was ex accessing the card reader's API directly and making calls to the API to make sure the card transactions were swiped in and like that. And in an ideal scenario, in an ideal world, that would be perfect, but card readers unfortunately have not reached that point where they could interact with our application and provide that API for us to finish that transaction uh, reliably. So again, that didn't work for us. Unit testing, that was another approach we took. And that, for the most part, in our code did work using unit tests. But unit tests, like they say, are just testing units of code. It was not an end-to-end -end test. And with being, being in testing, you sometimes do need integration tests. You need system level tests. You need tests that actually touch each part of your hardware the way we want to. So that was not an approach we were going to go ahead with. So what we were left with was automating swipes with a robot. We were like, this sounds like a viable option. We don't know how much time and effort it needs, but let's look into this. So that's what we went ahead with. All right, so now we'll go into the process. And to start you off, we will have a little video of showing how we built our robot. And then we'll go into it further.
technical difficulties. Uh, it, it was just some techie music going on in the background, so you're not really missing out on much. Yeah, there's still some cool visuals, so we'll make do. That is the card reader that we used for automation. Um, uh, this is called a stepper motor, so it's something that rotates around. This video was actually shot in like the the workshop of a, of a basement in a house. One of our colleagues actually built this whole uh, setup in house, so it was pretty cool the first time we saw it, and we were pretty psyched about recording the whole process. So as you can see, um, our robot really doesn't require a lot of like crazy equipment or anything to get started with. These are things you go to your, I guess, Home Depot in the States. I don't know what you guys have here, but you could just buy equipment and then you could get started making your own robots. So as you saw earlier in the keynote, uh, this is Arduino, and it lets us control uh, our stepper motor from our computers. So this is just assembling like the platform where we're going to build our robot. Um, we actually designed it so that they could be stackable. So we plan for in the future, we have multiple robots doing different tests all at once. So we just made sure that we'll be able to stack them on top of each other.
this video is basically just listing all the different parts that we used in our uh, robot creation. We also have an, a YouTube video that would show you step by step as to all the different parts we use and how we um, manage to assemble the whole whole robot together. So if you guys do need to re-go, rerun through this, this video or uh, visit this again to see all the other parts that we've used, uh, we will share the link to the YouTube video in the end as well. And if you're wondering how much everything cost, I think the total cost was under, I think around 80 US dollars. So it's not too expensive to get everything set up. Um, I actually think the most expensive parts were probably the stepper motor and driver, but I'm sure if you need something a little bit weaker, which is a little bit cheaper, you can do that as well. And also a lot of the starter kits that you come with Arduinos actually come with servos and things like that. So you can actually get started uh, with just a starter kit, which runs about $30. So this is just going through the wiring, the different parts together, just a brief overview. Uh, we used a breadboard for a lot of prototyping because we actually didn't know what would work and what didn't work. So breadboards are really great for that. You're able to experiment with different, different setups. And um, as you can see, we hot glued it on once we knew it worked. Probably not the best setup, but it's, it worked for us. Okay, so why a robot? So we wanted something to give us end-to-end -end system level testing, which we didn't have with our old code. Uh, we also needed something to be very reliable because we needed to pass nightly regressions. We also wanted to be really budget friendly because uh, no one in our organization uh, really knew what we were getting into and we wanted to prove that we can do something and it wouldn't blow our budget. And it wanted to be really easy to use and set up because we had different offices and if this really took off, we wanted to be able to replicate it in each place. So every QA team would have their own robot. So where this idea first came from was that our company has hackathons and a person uh, started an ARM-based robot. And although it really lacked the durability to run through a lot of swipes, it also couldn't really the hold the card properly through the credit card machines. Um, but then that got our the gears turning and we needed, we knew we needed a robot. Um, so we also, we need something that could run every night without fail to be sure to make sure our test ran properly. We also need something that could run multiple swipes in succession because as our merchants know, Credit cards don't always work the first time you swipe. Sometimes it takes multiple swipes, and we needed to replicate that in a testing environment. And this was a huge unknown for us, so we had to ensure our prototype was very low cost. So building the robot, uh, you saw in our music list video, um, we use off-the-shelf parts and supplies that can be found in your local hardware stores. There's nothing really extravagant that you need to do, at least for our robot. Um, so you saw it just had plywood, and then we had different parts to it. So the stepper motor, the motor driver, a power supply, an Arduino. We had our credit card reader, and we had a drawer slide. And we used the, if you saw the circular crank plate, so it turned the stepper motor circular motion into a linear motion to swipe the card. 
Uh, so this is the setup, like you saw. We have the Mac Mini on the top right, the Arduino right under it. There's a breadboard to the left of the Arduino. Then we have the stepper driver next to the breadboard, the, the stepper motor in the bottom left, and the power supply on the top left. Uh, so this is just how a stepper motor works, just a little mechanics for you guys. Uh, as you can see, it, uh, it activates magnets that are parallel to each other in very quick succession. So that's how it generates the circular motion. If you can see the shaft in the middle is turning according to the magnets, this ha happens many, many, many times a minute. So it, it's actually pretty fast. This is pretty slow. Um, and as you can see, this is the card reader going on and on and on and swiping the credit card. By far, this is literally my favorite GIF, and everybody in the company just feels so satisfied looking at this <laughs> GIF right here. All right, so writing the server. So at first, we wrote Arduino scripts to prototype just to see how fast things could go, if it could actually work. And then we had to see how we could actually integrate it with Appium. Uh, so we chose to use Johnny5. So Johnny5 is a JavaScript robot robotics framework. We can control the Arduino and through extension, the stepper motor through writing JavaScript code. And being a JavaScript framework, we can write both robot logic and the server logic in one code base. Although from the talk earlier today, it looks like Appium has robotic, robotic integrations now. So we'll see what happens in the future. But all it takes to swipe is you just have to start the server and send a post request. Uh, so this is some code. It's a very simple app. So it's an Express app. So you create Express app. Um, we're looking on port 3000. We also create Johnny5. And we have, so we start to create a new board. We also instantiate a stepper when the board is ready. And the stepper type is driver. We say there's 200 steps per revolution. And then we're telling it that the pins to look for are six and seven for the direction and the amount of times it should turn. And then these are the rest commands. So the one that we care about is the post to the swipe endpoint. And so our function just basically goes through and checks to make sure everything is set up properly, to make sure we have a board, to make sure the stepper is instantiated properly. And then we have a timeout inside the function to make sure that if the swipe didn't return a success in, this, in the amount of time that we expected it to, that we make sure we tell it that uh, it, it failed. And then you can see the stepper. We tell it the rotations per minute is 600. That's how fast it goes. We tell it clockwise, counterclockwise could also be clockwise. And we tell it to take 2,000 steps, which is uh, half a rotation. Cool. And then we go on to the solution. All right. So where does Appium fit into all this? Why are we talking about creating a robot at an Appium conference? Uh, First and foremost, we use iOS simulators. Uh, we use Android emulators also, as somebody had asked me earlier. But this project, we started off using iOS, and that's why we'd be explaining the iOS uh, side of things in more detail. So using iOS sim simulators, we connected to these network card readers, the Ingenico IPP320 that we showed earlier. That is a network uh, card reader that just plugs into your LAN, and you see it's available online once your iOS simulator is on the same subnet as as the card reader. So you use that to make a connection. We use XCUI table elements. We connect the simulator to the device under test, in this case, the card reader. Uh, the next step is starting a node server. And once you start the node server, it's as simple as using just a Ruby gem. We are a Ruby shop, so all our Appium code is written in Ruby. And all you need is the REST client Ruby gem, and you just send a post request to the web server once, once it's up. Um, there were a few things that came up while we were setting up. Once we had the prototype and we actually did the Appium integration, we realized that we needed to adjust the, suite, the speed of the swipes because as far as the swipe was being um, pushed by, by, the, by the node server, our, our card reader was not recognizing it as a proper human swipe. It was too fast. So we had to make sure we had to make sure we adjust that speed, which was done using the step rotation and the step uh, RPM. There were also swipe retries that we had to add into code because sometimes, like uh, we have said, you swipe once, it doesn't go through, and you realize that oh, it did not go through. You swipe again, so we had to add in handling and functionality like that. Um, these are basically all the technologies that we used in addition, in, uh, which integrated with Appium 
to make this robot uh, come to a, like an end-to-end -end test case. Uh, these are the Appium capabilities. As most of us who already know Appium, these are literally just the basic level capabilities. You're just creating a device, um, give it any name. Um, our iOS is the, the platform name is iOS. Platform version is whatever iOS version you want to run it on. Automation name would be XCI test. This is where our, our register application resides. So you just give it the path of the application and a timeout. It's literally as simple as that to set it up in Appium. So Appium Accessibility ID, I am a strong believer that, that any automation that's done in Appium can sustain only if your accessibility IDs are, are, are coded correctly. And you need to make sure as a tester that you, you put that push across and make sure developers know that this is what we rely on and this is what we need as an organization to have strong, reliable testing. And luckily for us, we didn't have to push through that much, but every element you see in here had an accessibility ID, which made coding so much easier. Connecting to the card reader from the screen, this is basically a table element screen. Connecting to the card reader, we had IDs. Recognizing what serial number it is, you find the card number with the serial number, connect to it. Checking if it is connected, even the check mark here had an accessibility ID. And we wait for the check mark to come on, which shows us that, okay, we are now connected to the card reader. So each step, each verification step became so much easier because we had accessibility IDs for each and every element in the app. That is a sample uh, code for how we used our, um, sorry, our, our uh, credit card payment screen in here. We, in, for this one, we used the swipe card on IPP for this particular example. When we started, we only had swipe cards. We've now gone forward and we actually have another robot for doing chip inserts as well, which I'll probably speak about in our conclusion. But for now, the swipe card, all it literally needed to do was wait for the accessibility ID to see whether we're ready to swipe card on our screen, give it the URL since our server was hosted on the same Mac mini as, the, as where the script was running. We literally just had to do local host, give it post 3000 that was hard coded and just say swipe. And that was it. That was literally all that you had to pass in with REST client and do a swipe uh, post command. And that, that's how we took care of swipe. We added retry saying that if it didn't go through you until we go to the next screen, you keep trying to retry your swipes. Um, going forward, as I said, we have used Raspberry Pi now instead of the Arduino server. And that has insert card, remove card, and the whole um, functionality which does an insert card waits for it to be done and then removes the card, but we'll speak about that in detail later. Uh, this is an end-to-end -end test of how the application works. I'll run you through it real quick. Literally just use the command line. We normally use Jenkins for our automation. There would be a Jenkins call, but just for this case, this, is a, this was a live video of this card reader, and I'll let you guys know when, when this uh, simulator is ready, it will go in and, and post the swipe at the same time. So it's just Installing the application right here, the web driver agent. Uh, once it installs the app, it'll activate the register with whatever test store we pass it in. Uh, put in the password. Once the register is activated, you sign into your, to your test store. You open your shift. And uh, there's another setup for receipt settings. Oh, sorry, no. Before that, we connect to the, we pass in the card uh, reader serial number. You wait for it to be connected. Once it is connected, you go back, and now we're doing some other receipt settings in the background, which is why there will be a little bit of a delay. You're getting updates for those receipt settings. And uh, just choose an item from the screen. In this case, we're getting a slice of pizza. Um, you hit credit. As soon as this is, you'll see that the swipe happens right there. Once the swipe happened, it's taking a little bit to read the swipe. Once that happened, it asked you for a tip saying that the payment did go through. And then uh, once you are on the tip screen, you just select whether you want to, whatever tip you want to put in. I guess somebody's taking longer to decide how much tip to put in. All right, no tip. All right, and then you're just authorizing that transaction and signing and getting a receipt. So that is what an end-to-end -end test for Shopkeep looks like. And you saw how little of a part the swipe was, but that was literally uh, limiting our entire test case to go from one end to the other. And 
just adding this swipe automation robot made it so much easier for us to complete our testing. So, conclusion. So, the extensions to automate with Appium. So, we have our chip card automation and contactless card automation. Uh, as Lua mentioned, and you can see below, this is our chip card automation that has been completed since making these slides. Um, so this one is actually using a Raspberry Pi instead of an Arduino, and it, we have a Python Flash server that can talk directly to the that what's called a linear actuator right over there. And all it does is inserts the card and removes the card. It's a pretty simple robot, but it also extends our testing. And then we also want to do a contactless card automation. Uh, before, we had a really low-tech solution of just taping a card onto a card reader. But we want to do something where we can lower a card and then raise a card when we need to. Um, we also had easy uh, repeatability to cover different credit card processors and readers. So now we have multiple, multiple setups with different readers and processors, a lot of different integrations. And now we can easily cover all of them with different robots. And then we have reduced manual testing effort to boost intelligent testing effort. So there's less of us going like this, and there's more people focusing on how to write better tests and how to write better Appium tests in, in particular. Um, so the major gains we had, so as I said before, we have easy test reproducibility. Um, every test could be run multiple times without us expending more effort. Um, we also actually have data collection for the first time with our test. Before, as maybe you guys know, when you do manual tests, I don't know if you write down every single conclusion, but now we actually have data coming in and we can tell where things are failing more or less over time. Um, we also, so you can see launch times, we have, the, we have charts that show it over time, we have re card reader connection times, and then credit processing time, so how long do external factors weigh into our systems. And then we also have a, something called a UL Collis tool. So we have this little card that you can program to be different cards. So with just one setup, you're able to test multiple card brands and card processors and even different ways of uh, card payments. This really came in handy because we actually had production bugs at one time where some uh, card readers would not take some particular brand type cards. And you wouldn't know this because when you're doing testing in-house, you're not testing every single card type on every single reader. So the only time you would know of a, of a bug like this is when it's already out in production and customers complain like, oh, we can't use this test card. And you don't, when you're taking payments, you cannot afford to take a risk that big. And that's why this reprogrammable card types letting us run on different card readers was a big gain for us. So it is open source. You could take a look at it. It's uh, github.com slash avib slash bumblebee. And we want you guys to think how you can build your own robot and integrate it with Appium. So as you guys saw in the keynote before, they, he has a pretty sweet setup, but I'm sure that costs thousands and thousands of dollars. Ours costs under $100, and we're able to get hardware-level integrations with Appium. Um, so you, should, you guys should think about what limits your software-based automation. So for us, it was actually in, using a card reader and seeing what a merchant actually feels when they swipe a card. So we actually didn't know what our users were doing like all the time. We weren't testing like our users would. We were thinking that we were, but we actually weren't. But now we have the robot, we can actually test like we are a user. And I want you to think about like what robot you can create to actually integrate with Appium. Yep. Another um, side note uh, in our conclusion, what we gained out of this project, which we had not initially thought of, but now we have remote access to all these card readers and credit card readers. So anytime I want to do a test, but I'm not in the office, I'm like, oh, I need to do a quick sanity check. We have a new build out. And I'm either working remotely or I'm not physically in the office. You can literally just log into the Mac Mini, use a simulator, and do an actual credit card swipe. And this was a plus that we we got. We didn't really think of it initially when we were making the robot as to this would be something we would gain out of it. But now a lot of engineers, we use the same hardware. Everybody doesn't need their own individual hardware. You just log in remotely and do a swipe and we, we gain that additional reusability factor as well. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, any questions?
Right. Right. Well, so for this particular card type, when we when we do swipe transactions, we don't need to enter a CVV. That usually the the pin code that we need to enter is usually on chip transactions. But um, we have not gotten to looking at at uh, J Jason's keynote speech today. I feel like I might borrow his his robot to press on keys, but. As of right now, the swipe does not do not take in any any numbers pressed in. Like they, we don't enter a CVV or PIN code or uh, anything like that. For the robot, uh, uh, which uh, we just went in and uh, uh, we just we just wrote, wrote that robot. Is that for that? No CVV. For this one, yeah. Like the way we take cards uh, in um, in the states, if you do a swipe transaction, you don't need to enter a CVV. Okay. It's only for chip insert that we need to enter a PIN code. Okay. Uh, for for the chip insert, uh, uh, have you guys done that to uh, have you guys done uh, automation to enter the CVV as well? So yeah. it's not really on the card reader, but what happens in the application, we also have a text box that comes in sometimes when you have to enter a code. We can enter that through uh, the application. So that is hard coded through Appium as well, okay. where it just gives you a text box to enter the CVV and then the card is accepted. But we don't have that capability, or we haven't automated that on the card reader. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, m my thought was uh, uh, me asking a CVV of you uh, is not allowed. Uh, uh, oh, it's illegal. not allowed here. Okay, Hello. yeah. We do not have that limitation, fortunately for us. That's why we haven't tested that scenario. But now that you say that, um, that that could be something additional yes. that we add into our yes. testing. In India, uh, we can't even ask. Uh, in India, we can't even ask uh, the number of the uh, card. Plus, uh, plus CVV. Okay. Well. All right. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, we've not had that limitation with our automation, but going forward, that's that's a good point you bring up. So actually, I don't have a doubt. Basically, I saw your product at, uh, and uh, it is quite amazing things you have implemented. But I was thinking like. If you go to a pub or somewhere, so they have uh, they have audio box. There will be multiple cassettes will be there, and if you will select one of the uh, cassettes, then it will select particular cassette. Then after it will start playing that song, right? So uh, right now you are swiping only one type of card. So I think uh, you guys can move ahead with that option also, like multiple types Changing of cards. Changing the card should be there, and whenever. The one card is swiped already, so it will go inside the queue, and next card will come up with the next line. So that time, that way, one machine will be used for, for the, all cards. the type of the cards, and we can test the multiple type of cards is getting accepted with the card reader. I think that that is a pretty good idea. So I am not sure whether uh, how that will work, but I think that will work properly. Yeah. Uh, so, Another fun fact for you guys, so none of us, we were three of us that worked on this project and neither of us had any mechanical background, electrical background. It was literally just looking at prototypes, looking at uh, blog posts and coming up with ideas. So ideas like that are great, like that helps us broaden our thinking and come up with new innovative ideas of, of testing. I think that will be better because whenever you will go to the vendor or somewhere some of the like some of the person want to use that things for their own uh, swiping card machines. So if they will come to you, they, and then you have to say that how many types of card they are supporting and right. how that much machine you will be giving. Right. So, so one solution for that was what Riaz mentioned in con in his conclusion. We have this, uh, re uh, we have a programmable card called, uh, we use this tool called the UI Callist tool. And with that, the same physical card that you use is connected to uh, a software and you can program that card to be a different card type each type so like one one time it's a visa type card one time it's a mastercard one time it's a, a discover so it does that right now but yeah that's a that's a great uh, future enhancement for us as well thank you that's a nice product anyone else so uh, have you done any security testing on this like uh, so there are like chances of hacking 
uh, the cars. So how do you ensure that like uh, while entering? So you told like there is no pin based automation so far. So when you just swipe, the money gets deducted from the customer or it's like, uh, how do you ensure that kind of scenarios? So in the testing environment is totally separate from our production environment. Okay. In the test environment, everything's on staging. Um, all our processors and gateways knows that it's a testing environment. So no real money is exchanged. Okay. So we're not really too worried about uh, oh, I see. Okay. people misusing The whole credit card processor that that is set up for in-house testing for point of sale application like that is a staging uh, environment. So it's it's different from what a production environment is. So like we have said that it's it's not real money that we're charging. Okay, okay, thanks. Are there any more questions? All, All right. right, guys. Bumblebee, as we call it in our uh, in-house project, is an open source uh, tool. So please go ahead, check out. And if you have any questions, our information is on the slides as well. Yeah, it's really simple. I hope you guys go out there and build some robots. It's pretty fun. Thank you.